Do you ever find yourself with too much to do? Is there ever a time when you wish things would calm down and not be so chaotic? In these fast-moving times, it is possible to become overwhelmed by the pace of life. You might find that you have too many things to deal with at once. We can say that you have too much on your plate. There is too much going on in your life. This can lead to your life becoming chaotic and disorganised. You have a lot to deal with at once. There are many things going on at once. You have a lot on your plate. I hope you don't have a lot on your plate today because it's Sunday afternoon here in the UK and this is Live English. Yes, here we go again. It's Sunday. It's a fun day. It's time to learn some English. Here we go again. Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. Here we go again. It's Sunday once more and it's time once again to have some live English. Here it is. Here is today's show. Can you see what is written on this paper? This is the whole two hours of today's show. But the writing is so small. E even I can't read it where I'm sitting here. I, I, I can't read this because it's so tiny. But that is it. That is the entirety of today's live English. English stream can you see it it's very small writing so how are you how's things how is it all going where you are in the world I hope everything is okay it is Sunday the 19th of November 2017 <gasps> we are over halfway through November December is approaching and of course we all know what happens in december do you know what happens something very special something very colorful something very exciting happens during december of course we all celebrate well some of us celebrate christmas and as you can see i have been very busy this week I've been putting up my Christmas lights, but as you can see, I've got myself into a little bit of a tangle here with my Christmas lights. I've got a little bit wrapped up in what I've been doing. So I've been very busy this week putting up my Christmas lights. As you can see, things are completely chaotic as usual. Chaotic. So the big question must be, what was the view like this morning? The view from my window, what was it like? Let's have a look, shall we? So here it is. This is the view from my window this morning. I woke up to a lovely autumnal morning. As you can see, most of the trees have turned brown and gold. So autumn is now at its peak. So most of the trees that will turn brown or gold, of course, they are called deciduous trees. Deciduous trees will lose their leaves during the autumn months. So there you can see the view this morning, everything looking very autumnal. And if you look in my garden, you can see that many of the trees are still green. And that's because they are evergreen evergreen so they do not lose their leaves during autumn there is a lesson all about autumn on my youtube channel and you can catch that by looking at the playlists 
did you see last week's lesson it was very busy mr steve was in such a good mood last week because he ordered some new tires for his car it's true mr steve gets very easily excited did you miss it did you miss last week's live stream how dare you well for those who missed it here it is in 26 seconds <laughs> So there it was last week's live stream in just 26 seconds did you see it last week it was a very busy one we also have a very busy one today as i've already mentioned we have mr steve and of course mr steve will be here today at three o'clock did it get colder in here or is it just me i think it's just you mr steve so there he is mr steve coming our way live at three o'clock today and with mr steve we will be talking all about his new health fad yes as regular viewers will know mr steve is a very health conscious person so this week he has started yet another crazy health fad what is it we will find out later on when mr steve appears once again and of course we'll be talking to mr steve about something else today we're going to talk all about something that a lot of people use in their everyday lives we're going to talk all about sms messaging now quite often when we send messages on our phones we often abbreviate what we want to say normally because we are quite often in a hurry so we don't we don't have much time in which to send the message so we normally shorten things we shorten the sentences and we make the words shorter we often abbreviate words when we send text messages so today with mr steve we are going to take a look at text message abbreviations a little bit later on as well I went for a lovely walk yesterday <gasps> oh as we just saw autumn is definitely at its peak at the moment it is the peak of autumn and here I am yesterday taking a walk in the autumn the autumn atmosphere surrounding me completely now look at that I don't know about you but I never get bored looking at autumn I can look at look at my window I can look out of the window and watch the autumn scenery for hours and hours it is truly a beautiful time of the year I absolutely love autumn so much really really do and there you can see many of the leaves that have fallen from the trees some of them are brown some of them are gold and some of them are still green so there it is the view during my walk that I took yesterday <gasps> oh and it was a beautiful day very autumnal it wasn't sunny but it was very cloudy but it, it, it did feel very autumnal very cool and there you can see the beautiful autumn leaves I also had a nice treat this week I saw some birds in my garden that i've never seen before i got very excited and this particular bird can you believe it is the smallest bird in the uk there is no smaller bird than this bird it is the gold crest and i was very lucky this week to actually find some gold crests in my garden sadly i didn't have time to take any photographs so this is a photograph not taken by me 
but this is what the gold crest looks like and they are very tiny birds they are very small and as I'm already mentioned the gold crest is the smallest bird in the UK it is very tiny so I felt very happy this week I was actually outside putting my Christmas lights on the side of the house it's a very big job and it normally takes me many days to do it so whilst out there I did see some little gold crests flying around and they were actually feeding in from insects they were feeding some insects they were feeding from the damson tree they were actually eating tiny insects so there it is some gold crests a lovely autumnal walk and of course we have mr steve coming later on <laughs> mr steve is coming at three today did it get colder in here or is it just me no mr steve it's just you definitely just you and of course we can't have the live chat without talking directly to you yes the live chat is now open <gasps> wow there are so many people already on the live chat hello to i man hello i man how are you today also kumar jiang julie patricia naja eleanor fam vu hello to you luciano is here hello and i hope you are all fine and healthy we are i feel great today blaze nelsey is here watching in haiti hello to you and a big hi to everyone watching in haiti iman why did you change the time now this is something that i've had quite a few emails about i haven't changed the time but the time in the uk has changed so we have actually changed our clocks we have gone back one hour we've gone back one hour so normally at the end of summer when winter begins we normally turn the clocks back so that's the reason why for some people my live stream is now appearing at a different time so the time here in the uk has gone back one hour in fact it's been like this for about three weeks now three weeks lots of things to ask today we have the mystery idioms coming very soon also i have something very lovely to show you do you remember the sleeping bull who remembers the bull that was sleeping at the back of my house and i made a very special video showing you the the bull having a little sleep well today we have something even cuter something very cute to show you later and it is the sleeping chick a little fledgling bird is having a sleep in my garden and we will be taking a look at that a little bit later on and trust me it is very very cute some questions to ask today when is the right time to start celebrating christmas because now it is mid-november but already people are starting to put up their christmas lights already so when is the right time to start celebrating christmas when is it too early and when is the right time to do it and here we can see this week we can see this week <laughs> that it's too early to celebrate christmas in mid-november that's what i think that's what i reckon i think it is far too early so when is the right time to celebrate christmas is it too early now to do it what do you think mr steve will be coming very soon and something else special today we have mr steve giving a live flash word it's true i'm not joking and for those who like watching the live 
flash words and sometimes the recorded ones here is mr steve with our first flash word of the day mock mock the word mock can be used as a verb or adjective as a verb the word mock means to tease or laugh at in a scornful or contemptuous way if all you are going to do is mock my decision, then I'm going. To make something seem laughably unreal or impossible is to mock. To mimic or act out something scornfully or sneeringly so as to put them down is mock. I heard you mocking my singing from the other room. To make an imitation or replica of something is to mock. As an adjective, the word mock means an examination arranged for training or practice. I will sit my mock GCSEs next month. Mock can also mean something that is not authentic or real, but without the intention to fool or deceive. For example, a mock Tudor house. The word mock derives from the old French word for deride mock <laughs> thank you mr steve and as i mentioned mr steve will be here at three o'clock live with some chit chat and of course we will be talking about sms messaging and we'll be finding out what Mr. Steve's new health fad is because apparently he has a new health fad. TS Tia is here on the live chat. Recently, I rarely use SMS messaging because now I use WhatsApp. Yes, of course, WhatsApp has become a very popular form of messaging and many people use it. It is free, of course and also you don't have to rush so you can type your message very slowly you don't have to be in a hurry and of course with whatsapp you can also send images video so it's a very useful thing so yes some people no longer have to use sms abbreviations tiraboom is here hello tiraboom thanks for joining me today Mr. Duncan, how are your things going? They are going OK. I can't complain, but it's a very busy time of the year because at this time of the year I, I am preparing for Christmas. I'm also preparing my lessons, my live lessons. I'm doing other things as well. So it's very, very, very busy today. Hello to Mamen. Hello to Manivel. Hello to Jung King or Jung Quing. Jung Quing Yu, who is watching at the moment in China. A big ni hao to everyone watching in China right now. Ray Han is here as well. Pedro Belmont. Hello, Pedro. It's lovely to see you again here today. Mr. Steve is becoming famous around the world. I think so. A lot of people are tuning in these days not to watch me, but to actually see Mr. Steve. Feel a little, little let down, really. I feel slightly let down by that, to be honest. <laughs> The daylight time has finished. Yes, we have put the clocks back. And that is the reason why my live stream is appearing at a different time. That's the reason why. Mahmood is here. Hello, Mahmood, watching in Iraq. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much. Today is a special day around the world. Do you know why? Because today is World Toilet Day, November the 19th is world toilet day now it might sound like a very amusing thing to talk about but in fact there is a serious side to this special day so on this day lots of people raise awareness of those who don't have proper sanitary 
or sanitary ways of getting rid of their human waste so that's the reason why we have world toilet day so that's what it is today and of course every week on the program quite often mr steve and also myself we will start talking about poop well we will try not to mention it today even though it is world toilet day but we will try not to mention poop <laughs> Mr. Duncan, please teach phrasal verbs and idioms in conversation. There is a lesson all about phrasal verbs on my YouTube channel. Don't forget, you can find all of my lessons, my playlists under this video right underneath. So all of my lessons and playlists are available underneath this video. It's true. And there is a lesson all about phrasal verbs and quite often you will see that I will start my live English stream with a phrasal verb as you saw today boom boom is here hello boom boom thanks for joining me today Patricia is here is it too early to celebrate Christmas with a lot of champagne well some people drink champagne all the time they don't need a special celebration but one of the questions today is when is the right time to start celebrating christmas and the reason why i'm mentioning this and hopefully this time i have the right video is because <laughs> at the moment in my local town everyone has started displaying their Christmas trees so here you can see this is something that I filmed yesterday and lots of people have already started putting up their Christmas trees and there you can see the local bookshop has already put up their Christmas display you can see the Christmas tree and there in the center of much Wenlock there it is the place I live in <laughs> This is where I live and you can see already there are some Christmas lights displayed above the clock and there you can see another shop with a Christmas tree in the window. I must say this is a very nice looking Christmas tree very lovely. So already here in my local town you can see that people have already started putting up their Christmas lights. They are also selling lots of things as well for Christmas. I can see a little snowman there and there is Santa Claus. Can you see Santa Claus and his reindeer? And there you can see a very colorful Christmas tree. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> but I can't help noticing that their lights are very plain. They have just white lights. Between you and me, I like multicolored lights. So I like lights that have lots of different colors. So there they are. The Christmas displays in my local town. This is where I live. A lot of people ask, Mr. Duncan, where do you live? I live in a place called Much Wenlock. It is a very small town. And there is Santa Claus looking slightly evil <laughs> I'm not sure if I like the look on Santa Claus face there he looks slightly evil <laughs> so there it was and today's question once again when is the right time to start celebrating Christmas is mid-November too early is it too early to start celebrating Christmas what do you think so as you have already noticed i have been putting up my christmas lights even though i have got into a little bit of a tangle here you can see i'm in a little bit of a mess with my christmas lights so let's have a look i have been putting my lights up on the outside of the house and here is a video all about that very task
This month is proving to be a busy one for me. I have been doing all sorts of things. Today I'm on the roof of my house fixing some festive lights to the railings above my garage. Have you noticed how important lights are during festivals and celebrations? Even the word light can have a significant meaning. We can see the light. This means that we have had a revelation. If a person suddenly changes their mind about something or they have a great idea, we can say that they have seen the light. Something that was unclear before can now be seen vividly and can be understood well. That person has seen the light. These are called fairy lights. They are tiny lights that glow and twinkle. Fairy lights are often hung on Christmas trees. They create a magical atmosphere with their gentle glow. Some fairy lights flash or blink. Some are white while others are multicoloured. The name fairy lights dates back to the late 1800s and became popular after they were used as a stage prop in the opera Ilanthi, written by the composers Gilbert and Sullivan. For the opera, small electric lights were placed on the actors who were playing fairies. The name fairy lights stuck and is still used to this very day. Did you know that originally candles were used as decorations? That does not sound very safe to me. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, yes it is it's sunday everyone it's live english all the way it's mr duncan that's me and i have been on youtube for ever such a long time can you guess how long i've been on youtube for over 11 years it's true back to the live chat we will be talking about christmas a little bit later on is it too soon to talk about Christmas is it too soon to start celebrating Christmas now this week I've been putting my Christmas lights on the house because it takes a very long time to do it but I won't be switching the lights on until December so I'm not putting them on yet I'm just putting them up on the house because it's a very big job Talking of big jobs, it is World Toilet Day today. World Toilet Day. We must all consider those who don't have proper sanitary disposal of their waste. I think so. It's something that a lot of people still don't have in the world. Fernando is here. I think mid-November is too early to start celebrating Christmas. Yes, I think I agree with you, to be honest. I think mid-November is too early. And yet, this week, here in Much Wenlock, people have started putting up and displaying their Christmas trees. In fact, many people already have their lights on. They've already started showing their Christmas displays. I think mid-November is too early. Although, having said that, Mr. Steve, a couple of days ago, was complaining because the roads were chaotic. And I said to Steve, I said, you know the reason why? You know what's happening? Everyone is rushing out to do their Christmas shopping. So I think that's what's happening. I think everything is starting early this year and that's what I that's what I think is going on and that's probably the reason why everyone's gone a little bit crazy for Christmas 
early this year that's what i think anyway so thank you fernando oh andrew is here as well thank you andrew irma says hello and a sunny good morning from Awaxa. I, I hope i pronounced that correctly hello mr duncan from hazet hello hazet in colombia i don't know what a what's what's a pesebre i don't know what that is in colombia we call it a pesebre what what is a pesebre can you tell me please <laughs> i would love to know luciano is here hello luciano merchants are eager to get the money from customers yes i think this year many people have started the christmas celebrations early because of course many of the shops have already started selling their christmas goods so yes i think you might be right and of course we have black friday as well i think black friday is next week if i'm not mistaken i think it's next week so black friday is a very busy period and there is a video on my youtube channel all about black friday it's true how many people live in much wenlock i think it's only a few thousand not many five thousand i think it's not even that but not many it's a very small town a very small place indeed maria says mr duncan it's dangerous to put lights near your body don't worry the lights that i had on my body are low voltage they don't use <laughs> full power electricity so don't worry about that no it's okay it isn't unsafe it isn't unsafe the, the lights i had on my body were actually low voltage the the power was very very low so don't worry about that thank you maria you have to play safe of course you are right thank you very much for that wow the live chat has gone crazy as usual tiraboom says i did put up some lights around my house and i wish i could show you mine oh okay then well maybe if you have a christmas display in your house or outside your house maybe you can send me a photograph so if you are celebrating christmas yourself please send me a picture of your christmas tree or maybe the lights outside your house something festive we might not have time to show them today but i will show them next week so if you have any lovely photographs of your christmas display maybe you have decided to do it early as well please let me know i think people in england prepare five weeks before christmas says tian yes but this is longer than five weeks some people have had their christmas decorations up for over two weeks so i think that's that's a little too early i really do hello mr duncan from armenia says ed game hello ed game thanks for joining me by the way if it is your first time today please let me know please tell me why do you have all of that toilet paper next to you well as i mentioned earlier today is world toilet day so i thought i would have this display as a way of commemorating it isn't it too early to have a good time says patricia i don't think it's ever too early to have a good time never some questions to ask you today well of course we have the mystery idioms and they are coming your way right now here they come today's mystery idioms here is the first one and there it is today's mystery idiom number one but what is it it is a well-known expression in english if you think you know what it is please let me know and here is idiom number two again another well-known expression in english but what is it what is it 
It is a well-known expression in English. Just say what you see. And they, there is the first one again. If you think you know the answers, just write it down on the live chat and I will read your name out if you make a guess. That sounds like a good idea. Another thing to ask, I'm going to ask Mr. Steve this question later. <laughs> Here is a question for Mr. Steve. What is the difference between cottage pie and shepherd's pie? So there you can see on the screen there is cottage pie and shepherd's pie. But what is the difference? I will find out later if Mr. Steve knows the difference between these two pies. Cottage pie and shepherd's pie. <laughs> Maybe you know the difference. Perhaps you do. Would you like to have a look at one of my Ask Mr. Duncan lessons? Well, would you? OK, we're going to have a look at one of my Ask Mr. Duncan lessons. And this is Ask Mr. Duncan number 24 <laughs> 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 Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Here I am again just after celebrating my birthday. Another year older but not much wiser with another selection of your email questions and comments concerning the English language and my work here on the internet. So without any more sitting around, let's have our first question for today. Can you explain the use of very and fished for, which you used in your By the Sea video lesson? This question comes from Elisa in Italy, who noticed these sentences in my video lesson entitled By the Sea. During this lesson, I said, the Spanish Armada sailed right past this very spot. In this sentence, the word very means exact or precise. On this very day, at that very moment, at this very spot, we point at or to an exact place or time. I also used the term fished for in the video. This means that one particular creature is being sought. We look for it. We search for that particular animal. We fish for crabs. Crabs are fished for in this area. We clearly state that a certain thing is being caught. As an action, fish can show that something is being pulled out from the water. The boy was fished from the lake. They had to fish my car from the river. A nice email. I have received a nice email from Wesley in Brazil, who thanks me for my video lessons and describes them as inspirational. That's nice. Wesley is in the process of finishing an English course and hopes in the future to teach English to children living in Brazil. Thank you for your kind words and Wesley would like to send a big special hello to all those around the world who are watching and learning too. How do we use recommend in a sentence and what synonyms are there? This question was sent in by Ralph, who lives in Portugal. The word recommend is used as a way of expressing a strong suggestion. You are pointing someone towards a certain thing by suggesting it. You can recommend almost anything. I saw the new Bruce Willis movie last night. I recommend you go and see it too. I went to Madeira for my holiday last year and I would recommend it to anyone. This is my recommendation. This food comes highly recommended. 
The last sentence shows that something is very popular and that many people like it. I recommend it. I suggest it. I urge you to try it or do it. It is highly rated. It comes highly recommended. What are the differences between the homonyms there, there and there? This question comes from Hernande, who lives in Brazil. A common occurrence in English is when two or more words have similar sounds. They are homonyms. They are pronounced in a similar way. A great example of this comes with these three words. First, we have there. This word relates to the location or destination of something in the distance or future. He is over there. There she is. There will be trouble. Are we there yet? The next there relates to possession by a third person or a group of people. The group will be late. Their bus has broken down. We often use there when we are unsure of a person's gender. Instead of his or hers, we say theirs. Mine, yours, theirs. Finally, there is a contraction for they are. The bus has been fixed and they're now moving again. Finally, it is worth mentioning another contraction, there are. This is a shortened version of there are. There are lots of seats available on the bus. This is an informal contraction, which is often spoken but rarely written. It's that time again. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, grandmas and grandpas, and of course, small furry animals with big eyes. It's now time for Word of the Week. Gratuitous. This week's word is gratuitous. This word relates to an action that is uncalled for or is seen as excessive. Something that is considered unjustly violent. A fight scene in a movie may be described as gratuitous because the action is too extreme and excessive. It may upset some people. This word can also relate to language. If a person uses too many swear words, then this could be described as gratuitous language. What are the differences between always and ever? Hmm. Looks like a spider. Hmm. This question was sent in by Oscar in Sweden. Always and ever can both be related to action and time. However, their uses can vary considerably. In its most basic form, always means continually, from now on, from this moment onwards. Something does not stop. I will always love you. I always eat porridge for breakfast. Always can show that something you do now has been done continually up until this moment. I have always been a happy person. The word ever can define many things. It can be used as a direct synonym for always. In fact, many uses of always can be replaced with forever. Then there is evermore. We can say forevermore. They all have the same meaning. From now on. Ever can also relate to an instance of something happening or being done, usually in the form of a question. Did you ever find that red dress you were looking for? Have you ever been to Paris? How ever did it happen? We can use ever informally to help show that something did not occur. I would never ever say that. Or that it will never occur from now on. 
I will never ever say that again. There's no need to wave at the moment. We're not going yet. Just before I leave you all today, I would like to say a special hello to all of my new followers who have subscribed to both of my English teaching channels. I now have students watching my videos in over 70 countries around the world. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying thank you for asking me. And of course, ta-ta for now. Yes, we are here live on a Sunday. It's Mr. Duncan in England, and I hope you are okay today. I had a message come through earlier on the live chat using the word pesebre, and apparently pesebre is a word that means nativity. So now we know. Of course, we are talking about Christmas. The word nativity is connected to Christmas time but is it too early to start celebrating Christmas at the moment mid November lots of people already have their Christmas lights and their Christmas trees displayed but is it too early what do you think the mystery idioms once again for those who missed them mystery idiom number one and here is mystery idiom number two if you think you know the answers just jot them down write them down on the live chat and send them to me why not would you like to see something really really cute now who remembers the sleeping bull do you remember the bull that was at the back of the house there is a bull and it was having a sleep and i was lucky enough to film it and i made a little video showing the sleeping bull well now we have something even cuter something really really cute this is the sleeping chick Oh, now I did say that it was cute. I did say I did promise it. I hope you enjoyed that. That was a baby greenfinch having a little sleep. 
filmed earlier this year during the fledging time lots of birds were leaving their nests and as you saw in that video it was a very sleepy chick very tired because of course it had just left the nest for the first time and it was taking a little rest on the bird bath so i hope you enjoyed that if you want to see it again later please let me know i don't mind i will show it to you again later it's all right we have Mr. Steve coming a little bit later on in around about seven minutes time. Mr. Steve will be live here. He will be doing something very unusual today. He will be giving you a very special live flash word. I think it's the first time we've ever had a live flash word from Mr. Steve. Also, you can get involved as well on the live chat. Lots of people here today. Belarusia says lovely image and lovely music as well. Also, Ryan is here as well, making a guess on one of the mystery idioms. OK, thank you very much for your guess. Olga is here. Oh, Mr. Duncan, can you make a special playlist of all of the cute animals from yourself? Yes, of course, over the years I have filmed many, many animals, some of them cute and some of them not so cute. So a few weeks ago we had the sleeping bull and today we had the sleeping chick. Wasn't it cute? If you want me to show it later, please let me know. I might show it again during the second hour. Of course, there is, there is another hour to come. So I'm not finishing in a moment. I'm going to carry on for another hour. Can you believe it? <gasps> so Mr. Steve will be here very soon. Trung Quang says, I hope you have a lovely day, Mr. Duncan, and happy streaming. Why do you have some Chinese Yuan on your microphone? Well, it is there to remind me of my time in China because of course I used to work in China many years ago I used to be an English teacher in China that is where I started making my YouTube videos over 11 years ago and in total I have been teaching English for over 15 years it's true so 15 years I have been teaching English Ed Games, Mr. Duncan, did you know that my country, Armenia, will snow in two weeks? So there will be snow in two weeks' time in Armenia. Wow. Tias says, Mr. Duncan, do you bring your camera everywhere you go? Quite often I take my mobile phone. So some of the footage, some of the video that you see has actually been filmed on my mobile phone. And that is one of the great things about modern technology. I love technology so much. First of all, I can actually make video recordings on my phone and show them to you. But also I can stream live on my phone and also here in my studio as well. So I love technology so much. I really do. Teresa asks, do you speak Mandarin? Idiandian. Idiandian is, is the answer to that question. <laughs> Pierre, Mr. Duncan, you are as cute as the bird. Thank you very much. Flattery will get you everywhere. It's almost dinner time for me. I will stay with you in the dormitory, but I will sadly have to leave the room for dinner. If I if I leave the room, I will lose the Wi-Fi signal. What should I do? Well, Mehmet, it sounds like you have quite a dilemma there. So if you go away for your supper, you'll lose the signal and then you won't be able to watch me. That's a tragedy. But of course, if you're hungry, you must go and get something to eat. That's what I think. So maybe your stomach will rule your head. I know it does mine. JC Geordie says, Mr. Duncan, can you swim? 
I'm not a very good swimmer. I will be honest. I can't swim. In fact, I can't swim at all. However, Mr. Steve is a very good swimmer. I should mention that Mr. Steve can swim very well, but I can't. I can drown very well. I'm very good at drowning. I've got that off <laughs> to perfection, to be honest. Roman P is here. How are you, Mr. Duncan? I'm OK. Thank you very much. I'm not too bad. Trung to you, Quang says in your video, I saw the lava lamp in your ask mr duncan lesson i haven't seen one of those for years do you still keep it yes i do in fact if you have a look behind me on the monitor you can see the lava lamp is actually on the screen behind me so that is actually the same lava lamp and yes i still have it and i still use it to this very day mr duncan what about the picture at the back of you what does it represent which picture do you mean? Do you mean the one that looks like my face? Do you mean this one? This one? Well, this actually is is a drawing that one of my viewers made for me. <laughs> and there's also one of Mr. Steve as well, which you will be seeing very soon because Mr. Steve will be here at three o'clock. Did it get colder in here or is it just me? <laughs> I think it's just you, Mr. Steve. It's just you. So Mr. Steve coming in a moment for all those Mr. Steve fans, because I know he has quite a few. Today we will be talking about SMS abbreviations. So when you send a text message, quite often we will abbreviate them. So we are going to have a look at some of them. Mr. Steve has some and I have one or two as well also we're going to talk about mr steve's very strange health fad this is something that steve does now every day in fact every morning it is something that mr steve does and it's very unusual we will be talking about that very soon mehmet says by the way i have learned a new word dilemma through your videos mr duncan thank you very much yes if you have a dilemma it means you have a difficult choice or a difficult decision to make so you have a difficult situation something that has to be sorted out that is hard to decide on it is a dilemma so here he comes uh, of course everyone loves this guy no one hates mr steve not one single person in the whole world hello to everyone watching at the moment thanks for joining me today it's so lovely to see you thank you very much for dropping by i do appreciate you spending your time with me because of course sunday is a day for resting so i hope you are very rested and i hope you are enjoying today's live stream here he is the man who needs no introduction hello mr duncan <laughs> <laughs> hello and hello to uh, everyone out there across the world oh i'm so excited to be here once again in your exciting show <laughs> and uh, after last week you said oh i was a bit too dull when i introduced myself so i'm going really over the top and saying hello welcome and it's great to be here wait there a minute mr steve don't you don't you realize it's too early to celebrate christmas you've you've got christmas lights behind you i oh yes you're right i've just seen them <laughs> i don't like to celebrate christmas too early have you spoken about that already we've mentioned it earlier and quite a few people agree that it is a little bit too early during november to start far, far to st too early far too early oh. 
In fact, it looks very pretty behind me. Look at these lovely creatures. <laughs> these, uh, what's that, a hare, Mr. Duncan? Is that, that a is, hare? That is a hare. And a couple of cats. Two cats and a hare. I wonder well, if they'd get on in real life. The Probably thing, not. The thing is, I realised that I had a, a big empty space <laughs> next to you, so I had to <laughs> fill it with something. So... So I grabbed the hare and I grabbed the two cats to, to, to fill the space. Well, they look very pretty. I've got to say, every week this is getting more and more attractive behind me. I don't want too many distractions, though, because obviously, you know, this is the main attraction. <laughs> and I, I see you're wearing a very interesting shirt today again. This old thing. <laughs> I'm it's talking about the shirt, by how the way. Would, how would you describe that pattern? Uh, a check pattern i think that's check yes or checkered yes it's this che shirt is checkered checkered so yes um it almost looks like a giant chessboard it does you, you could play games all over me <laughs> <laughs> not for the first time <laughs> well let's not get into that this is a family show so you think that celebrating christmas at the moment is too early yes uh if i had my way uh if i was in charge you wouldn't be allowed to advertise Christmas until two weeks before. That would be my rule as a dictator. <laughs> right. I would say no references to Christmas until two weeks before. And that's it. So, so you heard it first. Mr. Steve is now the dictator. There, there, there's a job going at the moment in Zimbabwe you could step into. I won't make any comments, I don't think, because I might get myself into trouble. You've been doing something very weird at the, uh, during these past few days. Uh, you came downstairs yesterday. Now, I was in the kitchen yesterday and Mr. Steve came downstairs and I, I, I thought he was having some sort of physical problem. Something very mm. strange was happening. You were purple. <laughs> You were completely <laughs> purple. Uh, I wasn't sure what was going on. You you were kind of a, a blue purple colour. And, and I thought I was going to have to phone an ambulance. I didn't know what was going on. That'll be my latest health fad. So this is your new f health fad, is it? It's my new health fad. As you know, I have many of these. In fact, I think we should introduce this as a regular a regular thing because I've got so many. You do. Uh, we, have could, we could fill up an entire year, probably more than that. It's true. You uh, have lots of very strange health fads, very strange health habits. Did we have all my various uh, colon cleansing items here on the very first show I was on? Yes. All the various bits of fibre. Yes. and things like that well anyway i've uh, i expect you'll be talking about that later because isn't it have you already mentioned uh, about the world toilet day or it whatever is it is, <laughs> it is yes J just because we we love talking about going to the toilet so much we ha actually have a good excuse to do it today we can actually do it and get away with it we could do it we could do it live it's because you've got toilet paper there on your desk i've just noticed i've got toilet paper but we don't have a toilet sadly ah right so we won't do that then <laughs> So my latest health fad, do you want to tell me? Shall I tell you? Well, I did tell you what it was because you were a bit worried about me because I, I was a strange blue colour. I thought I, I wasn't sure what was going on. I thought I thought you was having some sort of medical emergency. So, no. So, so what, what is it? What, what is it? What, what were you doing? Taking a cold shower. That's it. There we go. Yes. What but was... But 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 you were blue. I was blue, yeah, because that's because I'd uh, I'd been under the cold water for about five minutes, which I think was a bit too long. Uh, but yes, this is my latest health fad: uh, the benefits of taking a cold shower. And believe me, the water, the mains water coming in now, because it's winter, is quite cold. And uh, I read about this supposed to boost your immune system uh help with depression all sorts of health benefit not that i've got depression uh but it's supposed to give you a, a boost your whole body a, a big boost the shock of the cold water is supposed to reinvigorate you and believe me it's quite a shock if anyone's anyone out there ever taken a cold shower or by accident or or, or because they think it's healthy uh apparently it's the latest thing 
uh, and it, uh, it it transforms your body. It gives it such a shock. It, your body goes into sort of repair, and then you're supposed to feel wonderful. Actually, you do feel wonderful afterwards. It gives you a huge boost of, uh, of sort of uh, endorphins to your brain. It makes you well, feel wonderful afterwards. Do you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of those crazy people every year during the winter. I, I don't know where it is. I want to say Scandinavia, but I might be wrong. Mm -hmm or Switzerland but they they <laughs> they actually jump into the ice cold water they actually go naked dare I say into yes. the cold water they jump into the cold water well th they might not be completely naked I think they have their swimming costumes on but they, they jump straight into the icy water so is that is that a similar thing I think it's a similar thing uh, I think if they were naked I don't think yes I think if they were na naked especially the men they would notice one particular side effect of uh, jumping into very cold water and that is let's just say there is significant shrinkage shrinkage uh, in the uh, uh, male reproductive organ area shall we just say <laughs> the cold water makes everything go <laughs> yes it, it, it uh, shrivels up but it's uh, it's supposed to be very good for you and i just enjoy the, th the 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 thought of challenging myself can i actually do this uh, and and you know it's just a bit of a challenge i don't know it's some kind of a masochistic pleasure you're going to ask me have you used that word before masochistic on, uh, so you actually enjoy the pain of going under the water yes under the freezing because at this time of the year even if you have the water from the tap that the tap water is ice cold mm, it's only because about now five or six degrees it's winter now what what's the temperature it's about five I'm sure, i would it's probably about six or seven degrees at the moment i would say the water it probably doesn't drop much below that but in the in in the summer it's probably going to be 12 or 14 so it's about half the temperature it was in the summer and i started it in the summer and i started gradually start off with a hot shower and i was gradually reducing it but now i start off with a hot shower then whack it straight down to maximum cold and just stand there oh it's quite invigorating shouldn't that be minimum cold uh, what did I say? Maximum cold. Uh, maximum, no, maximum cold. Yeah. That doesn't sound right. I think you can say that. I think you can say minimum, minimum cold, <laughs> maximum heat. Possibly. I think you're fine. I'm right. Of uh, course, taking a cold shower is synonymous uh, with uh, with uh, uh, let's just say killing your libido, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> is that's it? what that's what we associate in this country oh i with, see so uh, if you get too if you get too too sort of excited sexually by, aroused oh i shall see we say, you can take a cold shower that is the traditional remedy i see for that complaint so if you know if your partner is uh, sick to death of you uh, making amorous advances they may say go and take a cold shower i'm not interested <laughs> I think also it can be just like an idiom as well. You can use is is like an idiom just to say, oh, I, I need a cold shower just to sort of calm down. But they don't actually have yes. a cold shower. So we can use it as a sort of phrase as well. I think so. Yes. Now, another question today. <laughs> this is something this is something you don't know about uh, really? that I'm going to spring but uh, i'm asking today what's the difference between cottage pie and shepherd's pie so there on the screen we can see on the left you can see a cottage pie and on the right a shepherd's pie now these are two very popular meals here in the uk now now this is something that, that you and i eat now and again isn't that true steve it is it's a very hearty winter warming food it is so uh, what what's the difference so so first of all what's the difference between cottage pie and shepherd's pie well they're both basically the same there's one crucial difference so you've got uh, meat and gravy and probably a few vegetables underneath with a with a topping of mashed potato which is baked in the oven mm. the crucial difference though is that if you've got a, a shepherd's pie what do shepherds do they herd uh, sheep so the meat inside a shepherd's pie would be lamb and the meat inside a cottage pie would be uh, probably beef would Did be the common one but i think the crucial thing is if it's called a shepherd's pie it's got to be lamb okay 
so that's the basic difference that. so cottage pie has beef and shepherd's pie has lamb and of course Correct. traditionally do you know how how these particular pies came about apparently apparently they were just made from leftovers so when people were sort of uh, gathering all their vegetables and meat they were they would store everything that was left over and they would make a pie out of all of the leftovers all of the food that was that was left so that's how we came by the cottage pie and the shepherd's pie so cottage pie is made with beef and shepherd's pie is made with <laughs> lamb or of course mutton as well which is the old sheep yeah eugene eugene is being very clever here he says the difference between those two is one is square and the other one is round yes i think oh. i think you might be right there eugene well done <laughs> thank you very much for that yes did you see that so there we go mm. that's another mystery solved so today we're going to look at something very unusual something that we don't often talk about but happens quite a lot in normal life and it is to do with our mobile phones do you send many messages on your phone steve i do yes i send a fair few uh mainly work related friends as well um but i've noticed recently that I'm getting a lot of messages from people and I think they're using voice recognition now oh, okay. rather than texting so uh, I'm noticing that people are replying back very very quickly and I found out it's because they're using voice recognition software in their phones ah. uh, so uh, yes texting uh, I don't think it's going away but it's uh, maybe the, the that other thing will take over the sort of voice recognition side maybe some people out there use this technology in their phone so what they are actually doing instead of typing with their finger they're just speaking into the phone and then the writing appears in the text message yes because it's uh, voice recognition software is getting a lot better now mm. uh, yeah, although it uh, it's it they started off putting it in cars I'm, I'm not sure they started it there but commonly uh, they put it in cars to try and help you to be less distracted when you're driving but unfortunately it very rarely works correctly it's very but frustrating I've, I've never been in a car where it's worked properly <laughs> so but anyway i'm distracting away from the main purpose of your uh, item which is uh, text messaging on phones that's it yes well there are many ways of doing it you see you can send video messages you can send photographs through uh, text messages and you can type so there are there are many ways of doing it of course email now you can send through the phone but sometimes mm -hmm. if you are in a hurry and you want to type something very quick we often abbreviate the sentence yes. or the words so today we're going to have a look at some of these words or some of these abbreviations and we are going to work out what the actual sentence or the word is does that sound good that does perhaps we can perhaps we can come up with some new ones well i believe you've got some already written down in front of you i have a few here that i've uh, <laughs> there's lots of information about this on the internet uh, so if anyone wants to have a definitive list then uh, just have a look there's loads loads out there and uh, some of them are quite funny and some of them are quite surprising some of them are very common uh, in fact abbreviations uh, well some of the abbreviations are almost acronyms aren't they that's it uh, yes mr duncan that that's can it cross there, over. Th there are different ones so some people use abbreviations of words whilst others use whole sentences just as the initialization um here's a good one i i will i will start the ball you rolling kick off i will kick off with this one so here is one b c b c well and this is a word it's a well b c i, I would just think of that as a, as a, a, the biblical b c no uh, it's an abbreviation though but it's an abbreviation so we're not going b c i've never heard of that one B, okay C. well you might use this in a sentence when you are stating something and the reason for it and this is actually because all right because so if you are shortening 
certain things in a text message now I know that this can be used in other ways as well but in this sense as a text message it means because so you will shorten it because mm -hmm. in a text message some okay. people slightly misunderstanding what I'm doing here no it, it doesn't mean <laughs> it doesn't mean BC as in a long time ago or bachelor before century that's it's what I said before Christ yes that's what I thought you meant so it's actually a different thing altogether so SMS abbreviations so there's an example there on the screen now so when you're sending messages through the internet or through your mobile phone signal you will shorten the sentence or you will shorten the word yes I hope I've explained that clearly and here's another one just to give you an idea and there it is to Moz and I'll show it to Steve I have no idea what that one is Mr Duncan I've never used that one before or had a text with it in I will see you tomorrow tomorrow to Moz yes so a lot of these <laughs> are used by people a lot younger than us <laughs> let's just say so two the number two is often used yes. instead of the word two which is to so quite often we will use the the number two instead or the number four for or, four yes four for example four 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 <laughs> we can use number four for four so that particular one means tomorrow tomorrow I there's that. other simple ones with letters like the letter C uh, would just mean C as in S E E yes so I C will see you you and here's a good one here it is and so talking which there it is C U so C U, C -U is basically C U I will see you see you tomorrow or I will see you later so there R. it is. Ah, there's another one. R, the letter R for A R E. R, R U. Yes. U. So do you have anything to show us? I don't have anything to show. Ah, oh, could I could write? Here's one. Let me write it down. Well, I'm hoping you this do. Is, <laughs> I didn't know you wanted me to write them down. Well, here's well, one then. Yes. I I for many years <laughs> uh, <laughs> incorrectly understood the meaning of this one. L O L L O L L O L. Okay. L O L. So, what do you think that stands for, Mr. Duncan? Well, I, I always thought it meant laugh out loud or lots of laughter. Yes, that is what it means. But uh, when I was new to texting, <laughs> if, if there is such a thing, was that last week? <laughs> uh, yes, I thought it meant lots of love. <laughs> oh, I see. So, so, were you sending laughter? to people that you want to do express affection for quite likely well I was getting these thinking everyone was in love with me <laughs> oh, I see. so you thought that when people were putting lol at the end of their messages you, yes. you thought that they were all madly in love with you I did but sadly they weren't and they were just laughing at me <laughs> they were saying it was lots of laughter okay <laughs> right let's get rid of that one What's this one then? I don't know if this one is still used. <laughs> it probably isn't. How about BFF? I can't even read that. Okay, I'll do is it again. It, is that is that in Chinese? Is that better? That's better. Yes. Okay, BFF. You are my BFF. If someone says that, what are they saying? Let's let's see if someone out there in internet land knows BFF Enzaka or en Enzaka or Anxaya says best friend forever correct Ooh, correct is that your best friend forever we are BFFs forever isn't that nice best friends forever Andrew has given us quite a good one and I think I might have it here as well I'm frantically writing them down now that I know you want me to do that, <laughs> Mr. Duncan. <laughs> yes, I, that, that was kind of the point of doing it, you see. <laughs> um, 
How about Here's this one? Can I put one up? I've got one. Here's another one. Here's oh, another one. I've beat got one. Beat me to it. There we go. So there is another one. Anyone know what that is? I will I show it to Mr. It. Steve. Don't say it. So does anyone know what that means? So that is an abbreviation used in text messaging or SMS messaging. What is it? Anyone know? Yes, well done. Saika Saika Afridi says great. Yes, it is the abbreviation of great. G R eight. Great. So of course the number eight is often used as the second half of a word ending with eight. So there we have great. We can also have late as well. So GR8 in a text message means great. Do you I've have got another, another one, one, Mr. Duncan? Do I've got another one. Wow, you're getting very excited now. Do you have another one? Here's one. <laughs> <laughs> O M O M G. These are very hard, by the way. O M G. This one is such a difficult one. <laughs> I can see you're really scouring, scouring for these. Uh... Oh my God! Yes, yes. Say Sayika has got that one right, and also <laughs> Enxaya, also and Arsha, uh, Abdi and everyone else on the planet i'm just wondering if you if you were uh, depending on your religious beliefs you could change the g at the end couldn't you to other things whatever your sort of deity is or your sort of uh, the great person that you worship whatever religion you are i wonder if other countries uh, substitute the g for god for other things i don't know like omb oh, oh my, my buddha buddha Yes, or there you go. OMA. Yes, How about OMA. Yes, perhaps. KM8. Here we go. So here's another one. Here's another abbreviation. KM8. They're coming thick and fast now, Mr. Duncan. Yeah. Can you see it? KM8. Okay, then. So what is that one? That is. Now, if you are letting your friend know that you got their message or that you understand what they're saying, you can say, K mate, K mate, which means, all right, my friend, okay, mate. Ah, you see? Do you like that? Here's one for you, Mr. I think Duncan. I think that's quite a good one. K mate, okay, mate. <laughs> Here's one for you, Mr. Duncan. Sorry? Um, oh my goodness. Okay, I don't think this is real. I think you're making this one up. No, this is a legitimate abbreviation. You might you might need to move it back slightly because I think there's a, there's a letter at the end. Go across the other way. That way. That's it, that's it. I, I thought there was a letter missing at the end, you see. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Does anyone know what that is? You, you've, you've gone off the screen again, Mr. Steve. Have I? Yes. <laughs> Oh, back again how about that's that it. no the other way that way that's the, the other way a bit more oh, no the way. other way <laughs> shall i just put you on the wide angle there we go that's better that's yes. easier i can't <laughs> tell you see, we'll, we'll be here all day m t f b w y anybody got that one i have no idea i have oh, shall i give you a clue i don't i don't know what that is do you want a clue, Mr. Duncan? And, and, and the live chat has also gone very silent. Well, it's legitimate. Is it real? Yes. Hold it up again. My. Is it my? No. Men. Oh, let me give you a clue. OK. It's related to Star Wars. Oh, for goodness sake. Yes, of course. Is it? May the force be with you. Yes, sometimes people put that in texts. Really? To, yes, it's here. It's on uh, this official list of uh, text abbreviations. I see. Yes. Okay. Obviously, not used very popularly. Pop, not very popular. 
popular read. Around the, I just made up a word then. Today, everybody, <laughs> we have made up a new word. Popular read. Let's move on. I Pop- like this one. Well, let me just write this new word down. I'm going to phone up the Oxford. Wait there a no, minute. We're, we're moving just, uh, on. We're moving on. <laughs> Hello? Is that the Oxford English Dictionary? Here's we, another one. We have a new word. Popular read. <laughs> It's, some, <laughs> it's popularly a real word. Apparently, it isn't. Things this, happen when you're live in front of the entire world. Isn't this fun? <laughs> How about this one? <laughs> this might be used by uh, children <laughs> if they are texting. Uh, or is it? Is it paedophiles all lie? It is not, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> oh, okay. It is. Anybody got that one? <laughs> Did you use that when you were a child? Play and laugh. No, it's parents are listening. Oh, I see. Apparently. Yes, that's very good. I like that one. Yes, that's a very modern one. So if you're talking on the phone, you might send a secret message to your friends saying P A L, which means parents are listening or its related form oh no pair oh i know this one this one's easy uh, parents in room that's correct mr that, Duncan. that means that the parents are nearby and they are listening isn't there a something called a pir detector is isn't there that, i think there is isn't that an infrared detector i so don't that know means probably something else in the world of electronics you're telling me i thought you would know that being an electronics P-I-R? expert yes do you ever use it in a text message well i've never used it because when i was a child <laughs> there were no mobile phones <laughs> oh here's How another about one that here's another one <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about now by the way <laughs> you're sort of just drifting i off. thought you meant did i ever use that abbreviation you're like you're like a boat just sailing away on on the on the ocean <laughs> just drifting away has anybody out there got any to send us for us to guess? Here's another one. Uh, and, and that's for you as well, Mr. Steve. Before something. Before. What could the N stand for? Before. Saika or Seika. Seika Afridi is very good at this. Well done. <laughs> it is bye for now. Oh. Ah, you see. We're not saying that just yet, are we? We are not saying bye, <laughs> although quite a few of the viewers are. <laughs> oh, guess what? We've had an email come through. Let's change the subject slightly. Please, someone, please change the subject. Here we go. It is Eugene, and Eugene has sent a photograph. I think it might be something to do with Christmas. Let's have a look, shall we? I have to Christmas. Wait wait for it to come through oh yes look it's me it's me on the tv there i am look on the on the screen can you see me so there i am at eugene's house so eugene also has some lights around the window a bit a bit like me here in my studio with my colorful lights and of course there are some lights behind mr steve so if you have some lights or a Christmas tree in your house that you would like to send me, maybe send it today or maybe send it for next week. Or maybe you could send something special during Christmas time. Yes, very good. Let's have another look. Let's have another look. Right. We have quite a few here. I've got one. Oh, OK, then. Mr. I'm ready. While you've been talking, I've been writing them down. Yeah. It, this is a bit of an old one. I don't know whether it's used in text messages, but it's an abbreviation. Uh, da, 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 da. AKA. I think I know that one. Does anyone know what AKA stands for? It is a well known abbreviation. Quite often. I think it's probably used in text messages. Also known as says correct aradas aradas says also known as aka so some people have two names so you might say steve aka mr steve <laughs> also Ooh. known as very good 
okay here's one for you for everyone to guess here we go there it is does anyone i can't see it know that one you like the ones with letters and numbers combined yes, yes it's quite interesting in fact i just gave the answer away literally i just gave the answer to that one and if it's on my <laughs> list here <laughs> does anyone know this it's very easy actually i i thought this might be difficult but i, I think it's actually quite easy so this well, is something you might use in an a text message if you want to send it very quickly it is anyone anyone oh yes n e one anyone so does anyone <laughs> know the answer to this yeah you see i actually gave the answer away by accident <laughs> silly me if we were talking about something mm. and one of us had had enough of it we may use this abbreviation E O D. Oh, okay then. And this is this is a real text message. Text or internet. Okay then. Oh, I don't know what this could be. E O D. Everyone. Is it? No. We've been talking about something. One of us gets a bit bored, and so we would send a text saying um i don't know um, anybody a, got it apparently Anne two and two says end of day oh very close it could mean that that, that that could be something but oh uh it's the first two words are correct for what i was thinking of and what i've got down here end of discussion end of discussion that means it's time to stop talking oh i see that might be a bit rude Yes. apparently i was reading about uh, text messages if you uh, you can you can use these we've we've capitalized them all mm. or abbreviation for for capitals of course is cap oh is i it see not but uh if they're in you can use these abbreviations or acronyms as some of them turn into uh in you can use them in capitals or you can use them in small letters but if you tend to use lots of capitals in text messages it means you're trying to make a point and it can be come across as a bit rude can it yeah. not well it's a bit like informal writing as well if you write something formally you never use capital letters if it's an email you never use capital letters if you are sending something formally because it, it can come across as very rude or of course it can make you seem a little bit crazy as well do you use predictive text mr duncan i i find predictive text very annoying because quite often it gives me the wrong word and sometimes it gives me a rude word so sometimes when you're typing things you you want to say one thing but you end up with something very different on the screen and <laughs> yes. sometimes the word the word is very rude or sometimes a little uh, offensive and, and you have to be careful not to send it so you have to always check so sometimes when your phone predicts the words you have to be very careful indeed yes you've I got think to be so. very careful generally sending texts that you don't accidentally send it to the wrong person i think so okay then another one <laughs> oh i haven't got any more i've run out oh, okay. oh no there are loads of here i i could uh, how about I bet you could hear me writing that. <laughs> that was that was very clear. I could hear your pen squeaking. How about this one? Oh, I see. Oh, I think we know this one, don't we? This is something that I say a lot to my neighbours. I, I normally say this to my neighbours quite a lot. Does anyone know? Anyone know which uh, abbreviation that is that you might use in a text message? Because, of course, that's what we are talking about today. We are talking about sms abbreviations so the way in which we shorten words or sentences yes. so we can type them very quickly so you might ask me mr duncan oh i saw you with that girl last night <laughs> what's what's going on there yes. and i might say 
<laughs> well, I might say this. I might say some other things, but this might be one of them. Connell, Connell says, "Oh, none of your business." Correct. Well done, Connell. Well done. A well prize done. for you. And also Anne, Anne to Chow Huin, who, who I think is watching in Vietnam, also says, "None of your business." Something that we often say quite often around here where we live. <laughs> we do. Thank you, yes. Arsha, as well. Arsha also said, "None of your business," as well. So that's very interesting. One more. One more each, or just one more from me. I've got, I've got one more, and then you can have one more. If you've beaten me to it, yes. Here we go. So this is something that you might say if you think something is okay or if you approve of something if you approve you might just say this in a text message but what is it what is it andrew has got it right also saika and also an too yes it's ah. can you see it mr steve no and uh, because i i have no idea what that is in fact <laughs> I can't see that. Ah, here we go then. I'll show you this way. Okay. I don't know what that is, Mr. Duncan. I. That's it. It's on the screen now. We can see it. Okay, there's mine. So there is mine and there is Mr. Steve's. So you've got two at the same time to solve. <laughs> um, yes, we've had some answers for mine. No problem. Yes, well done. No problem. If something is fine or okay or you approve of something it's NP no problem no problem no problem and or if you didn't know the answer to that you might say I don't know I, I don't D know I D K oh, yes I D K I don't know <laughs> I hope you found this interesting today it's been a very different topic I must say Mr Steve Yes. Are you going to have another cold shower tomorrow? I might have one after this show. <laughs> you might have one during. Um, in order to calm down, I might need to do something <laughs> uh, drastic, like go. Now I've had one cold shower. In fact, I haven't had one today. I had one yesterday, but I went too far, and as you uh, rightly pointed out, I was purple <laughs> uh, because uh, all the uh, well, it looked like I was half dead. I knew I'd overdone it because it took me about four hours to warm up. I felt cold down to my bones. You didn't look well. You looked uh, purple. You were actually blue. I think the limit is two minutes, really. Anything more than that. A athletes do this. Uh, it's very popular now uh, with footballers and any kind of uh, athlete, cyclists, that they uh, go into... I, I saw a programme about, about uh, footballers, and after their training session, they went into this cold room, this specially prepared room that was minus 30 and all the or they all crammed in there for a short period of time and the cold apparently is good for uh, helping the muscles to uh, and the joints and uh, your body tissues to repair themselves after they've had a lot of physical activity so uh, you know i think i'm on to a good thing with this okay, cold then. shower so do you think it's helping you definitely okay. or be only for a few minutes i suppose i should at this point give a health warning to anyone who is thinking of jumping under the cold water so can i just say don't do it straight away find out that if if you're if you're healthy enough to do it because the shock might might well it might kill you basically so please take care if you are going to do it please check with your doctor first just to make sure so i'm just clearing myself there just to make sure that we don't get sued by anyone very responsible or or any next of kin <laughs> apparently it's good for uh, if you're a health freak you'll know about free radicals oh aridas aridas is on the live chat Ooh. apparently it's called cryotherapy cryotherapy very good yes why, why didn't why didn't you say that <laughs> i was going to say it uh, helps your resistance to oxidative stress but uh, cryotherapy yes that is is uh, is a cryo meaning cold of course um, I think, 
I think cryotherapy is is pretty cool. Yes, that's a great. Yes, <laughs> it's th literally. that's what the athletes are, are doing at the moment. It's the latest thing to help them uh, recover, so they can have longer, faster, more intense physical training sessions. Then they go into the cold and uh, helps them recover. Did we just quicker. say? Did we just say this? I just said it in a different way. Sorry, am, am I watching the replay <laughs> of this of this lesson? <laughs> oxidative stress do you know what that is mr duncan oxidative stress i i, oxidative. I think I'm, i think i'm getting it right now <laughs> it's a build-up of, of of nasty free radicals in your body caused uh, when uh, when uh, well do you want me to go into the details not particularly i didn't think you would <laughs> no <laughs> I could feel I could feel sleep coming on. I, I think I think half the planet will be will be asleep by then. Cry let's stick to cryotherapy. Cryotherapy. I, I'm I'm definitely well. Some somebody asked if I'm going to do it. I'm definitely not going to try. I like my showers nice and warm. I like my hot showers. I like lots of steam in the bathroom. I I, I want the windows oh, to does. literally steam up when I'm having a shower. Whereas Mr. Steve. He, he he doesn't he likes to take cold showers i don't like the idea yes, of that. i'm tough no. tough and resilient apparently according to arias i think aridas says it oxidates because of the lactic acid yes oh yes definitely you are correct there um when we are because we have to uh we have to produce energy in our bodies and the way we do that is to burn carbohydrates and fats. We need oxygen, which is why we breathe in oxygen. But that process generates lots of uh, byproducts, one of them being lactic acid. Uh, and uh, the cold helps the body to metabolize it quicker. So I understand. Yes. And uh, yes, so yes, I managed to get a little bit more in there. So to metabolize, what does metabolize mean? Uh, that means to, to break down. Yes, to process the thing in process the body. Process it, break it down. Hmm. Yes, it's quite strange actually because the the process of of, of, of burning energy creates these uh, free radicals, which are, are sort of reactive molecules that can destroy your tissues. And we have a system that that will soak up these free radicals. So the very act of breathing, exercising, is actually aging you at the same time because every time you burn some energy up you're producing free radicals but if you've got a a good system in your body that soaks it all up and the cold can help with that apparently okay. so well, yes apparently according to uh, according to analytic brain sorry uh, to andrew how did, you, how did you change andrew to analytic brain because they're right next to each other on the uh, live chat there's somebody called analytic brain did you say well that? i think i think it's a nickname it's andrew very clever. can i can i just read this out please go ahead i find it better to do squats to make your body work or just walk for 20 minutes yes i i agree with exactly. you andrew i agree with you the, yes people who do you, there is a there is a um an ideal amount of exercise to take which uh which is good for your body and if you go over that so if you see people running miles and miles apparently that is actually aging you yeah there, there is a there is a peak there's like a curve and you want so 20 minutes half an hour a day is about the optimum level and if you start doing a lot more than that it's actually aging you apparently yeah. well you know what i always think whenever i see someone doing a lot of running they they run every day because quite a few people around here run very regularly but I always think that it's putting a strain on your bones and your joints. Ah, yes, but that's also a benefit because uh, to have a bit of stress, it's like going into the cold. You, you want a bit of stress on your bones because that actually helps to keep them strong. Because when you put a bit of stress by running, then that sends a signal to your, your bones and your joints to put a bit more calcium in or make them a bit stronger or a bit thicker. Oh. But the, the secret is not, not to do too much. So, I mean, if you only do 20 minutes, that's fine. But if you're running for two hours, then that's going to cause 
problems for you uh, in the long term. Mm. And I, I spoke, actually, interestingly, I went for a health checkup recently. Sorry, am I ra- going on too much about this? I went for a health checkup. And uh, it, this chap was a heart surgeon, an expert in, in, in how the heart works. And he, he told me that all the, the latest research now shows that people who do lots of very strenuous exercise, in fact, live less long than people who just do small amounts of gent- more gentle exercise apparently one of the worst is this cycling uh, this sort of you know speed cycling uh, puts a lot of stress on you on your heart there's this thing that people do and, and I think it's been very trendy for a long time they they go to the gym and they they do this very fast cycling it's called spinning and I think that's that that's supposed to get the heart rate up very high and very very sudden and very quick but but I think it's a very bad idea. Well, it's all right in short amounts. It's if you start doing it every day for a long time. Mm. Short amounts I- I- is fine, but I think uh, I'm no health expert, but I do read a lot about it. And apparently 20 minutes walk a day is, is probably all you need. I've been asked to tell you how... I've been asked to mention how cold it gets here in Much Wenlock. It can get quite cold, mm. around about minus five, sometimes much lower than that, maybe minus ten. But having said that, during the past few years, it hasn't been that cold here in the UK. But we sometimes have the temperature fall below freezing and, and and what i'm looking forward to is mr steve going outside on a very cold day and hopefully if we have some snow we, we will see if mr steve will roll around in the snow instead of having a cold shower what do you think about that <laughs> i won't be doing it naked because <laughs> the uh, might upset the neighbors <laughs> it'll upset everyone <laughs> it certainly would so the, the secret apparently is not to force yourself one doesn't want to do too much you, you can overdo anything apparently moderation i think so moderation all these uh, if you when people live that they, they live to 100 and then they get interviewed you never hear any of them saying i took regular exercise i all the things that they tell us are healthy all the people that live to 100 they never they've never done any of them they want, but the one thing they always seem to have in common is that they're just moderation in everything that they do. So That's they have it. a bit of everything or do a bit of everything, but they don't go to excess with it. So they might have a drink. They might even some of them might have the odd smoke, uh, but they just do it in small, well, in small amounts. I don't small think amounts. smoking is a good idea. Yes, moderation. Uh, but moderation seems to be the key yes. to to living a long time, maximizing your lifespan that's very nice jose is here jose manuel mm. brotons martinez that's one name by the way that's one person's that's name a hell of a name today is the first time that i see you in the live chat thank you mr duncan thank you very much J- jose or jose jose or jose i think it's jose i often get mm. told off for, for mispronouncing that also We have also Patrick Malval is here as well, watching in France. A big bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour to you. Comment allez-vous? What was that? Je m'appelle Mr. Steve. Monsieur. (laughs) It's not Mr. It's Monsieur. Monsieur. You are Monsieur Steve. 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 All, All British people know a small amount of French. But all French people know a lot of English. That's it. Because we're lazy in the UK at learning other languages. Do you think so? Definitely. It's an attitude. It's always been been there. But everyone, when I grew up, we all learnt French at school. Uh, But we didn't, you know, yeah, yeah, we did. It wasn't treated that seriously. Whereas I think uh, in most of Europe, I think learning English is taken a lot more seriously it's just a bit of a bad attitude that we've got in this country we just uh, we just assume everyone's got to speak english it's a bit arrogance really for those who've just joined us we are now watching mr steve's lecture all about <laughs> why english people are very lazy and too lazy to <laughs> to learn new new languages when I, when I was at school we <laughs> had a french teacher who 
came it was an ex an exchange french teacher okay she i was 16 at the time probably 15 16 and uh this incredibly beautiful uh female french teacher came from france to teach her she was probably about 21 or something and uh she used to say that my name is steve but she used to call me atn atn because she said that was the closest thing to the name steve in french oh i see atn that's what she told me okay. anyway i fell in love with her so there you go that's it <laughs> I think every every person in the school had fallen in love with this French teacher. <laughs> there, there is something there is something strangely alluring about uh, the French accent, and I think also the Italian accent as well. I think I think they are very romantic accents and very romantic languages. They sound. I could listen to the French accent for a very long time. To be honest, I think the French accent is quite lovely to listen to and also maybe the italian accent as well very sort of uh i want to say sexy definitely the, the, so. the, the last uh, job i i had uh, one of the bosses was a french uh woman incredibly beautiful french woman and uh, she could say anything we just believed her yes <laughs> that's what they say about <laughs> british people they say you can you can literally say anything in english if you have a if you have a british english accent like 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 mine and mr steve's apparently you can say anything and people will believe you <laughs> but so, some words she would pronounce uh, and uh, everyone would laugh uh, because there are certain uh, words that when french people are trying to pronounce them they can sound quite rude apparently steve steve in german is stefan 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 ah right so, i so like if, that if you are called steve uh, the the german equivalent is stefan. stefan so what is the french equivalent is it atn all these years i thought it was atn but maybe it's not yes it, it is apparently ah. um, aradas aradas also says steve is etienne wow that's great lovely there's a word can i you can i there's one word that uh, that uh, french people often pronounce in english which can sound very rude if not pronounced correctly oh what's that it's the word focus ah i know yes <laughs> and also um in, in certain accents or certain languages when a person is using english another one is pass pass focus or you peace see that? yes focus yes focus. i think so Be because sometimes accents with certain english words can actually make the words sound a little rude another one is peace so if someone says peace yes they might say something else because of the pronunciation so instead of saying peace they might say piss so piss. in the word in the word focus the o is pronounced with as o focus we need more piss but if you pronounce that as an o more of a closed vowel i would say that was then it comes out as something completely different we need more piss in the world piss give right. piss, give piss a chance so instead of saying peace you see that's it apparently in in greek uh, apparently steve is stephanus or stephanus stephanus ah this is great uh, we're learning quite a lot today here with yeah. just five minutes to go stephanie is, uh, is is a girl's name in this country uh so i wonder if stephanie is i wonder if that's a french female name or maybe german the german uh name i wonder where stephanie comes from because people it's not a popular name is it over here well i think i think stephanie is like the female equivalent of stephen yes i think so i think it is in this country. it's a bit like victor and victoria i think there's a, there's a there's a similar sort of thing there a similar link five minutes to go yes we are going to give the answers to the mystery idioms we, we've only mentioned them a couple of times today and we will finish today with the sleepy chick oh mr steve did you see the sleepy chick earlier? no no you didn't see it 
Oh. I don't know. What, what's this sleepy chick? It's a little chick that's having a sleep. Where? It, it's so cute. It is something I filmed in the back garden. I haven't and seen that. It's very, very lovely. And that's what we'll, we'll be finishing with that today. But, of course, we have some unfinished business, which is the mystery idioms. So, first of all, here is the first one. Quite a few people got this one right. Well done. And this particular idiom is... Face the music. Face the music. Oh. The meaning. To be confronted with the unpleasant consequences of one's actions is to face the music. He walked into the courtroom to face the music. And the second one... I thought this one was quite easy, but actually not many people got this right which I was very surprised by. The second mystery idiom for today is hold the fort. Hold the fort. The meaning, take responsibility for a situation whilst another person is temporarily absent. You take charge for a short time. You hold the fort. So there they are. Today's mystery idioms are now sold yeah, so for example mr duncan if you suddenly had uh, the need to go to the toilet <laughs> oh, okay. in the middle of your show i could hold the fort for you while you were gone but as we're nearly out of time i won't have to do that today that's it you take responsibility whilst the person in charge goes away you hold the fort i've got a flash word here yes of course well that's what we were going to squeeze in at the end this is something we don't normally do but today we are going to do it so it's all yours mr steve today's flash word is anodyne is that on the uh, correctly on there can you see it mr duncan i can see it anodyne is an english adjective the word anodyne is an english adjective that describes something that is inoffensive and tame to do something in a way that won't upset or offend anyone can be described as anodyne. I found his speech to be anodyne and uninspiring. A thing that's done in a safe and boring way can be described as being anodyne. To avoid offending anyone, he decided to keep his jokes as anodyne as possible. Synonyms of anodyne include bland, dull, inoffensive, insipid, neutral, safe, tame. Anodyne. Some people say that my English stream is a little bit anodyne. I don't think so. I disagree entirely. I was going to say your show is anything but anodyne. It is, it is whatever the opposite of anodyne is. Exciting. Anodyne. Apparently, uh, uh, in French, it's anodine. Anodine. It, actually, there's, there's a medicine. There's, there's, there's a type of medicine that you take when you get a headache called anodine. Yes. Yes. Ah, oh, right. And that's it. That, that's as interesting as that sentence is going to get. <laughs> I wonder if that's how they name the, uh, the, the drug. I don't know. Maybe, maybe mm. not. Who knows? We, we, we might never know. We might never get the answer to that question ever. Perhaps it dulls the senses, dulls yes. the pain. Yes. Anodin. Mm. Safiula is here. Hello, Safiula. Hello. How are, you, how are you doing? I'm doing OK, but we are going in a moment. We are going to end today with the sleeping chick. A lot of people liked the sleeping chick, so... <laughs> well, I haven't seen it yet, so I'll come over and have a look. Do you want me to buzz off while you close the show? You can stay. You might as well hang around for a bit longer. He normally tells me to, to go because he likes to close the show, you know. I love Sundays because on Sunday I know that I can do my live stream and also for supper, of course, what's, what's on the menu tonight? What's on the menu tonight? A bit of uh, a bit of poisson. Poisson. Yes. A bit of poisson is on the menu tonight. Poisson. That's French for fish. Fish. Specifically, 
It's going to be because it's Sunday. It's salmon. Salmon. It's yeah. Salmon Sunday. Sunday is salmon day with rice, uh, roasted tomatoes, uh, some uh, hollandaise sauce, and uh, sweet potatoes and brown rice. That sounds great. And a few peas because we like mixing peas in with the rice. Some petit pois. Petit pois. Petit Got pois. it all turning french look at the look at the look at the, uh, the the effect that one french person has had on us turned us european again of course i am part french anyway. you are i am i'm actually a little bit french you're yes. probably about an eighth french i am i'm a little bit i'm not sure which part of me is french but but one of my one of my body parts is apparently french was it your grandfather or your great grandfather was french that's true came over all the way from mm. france that is true <laughs> we are going now uh, thanks a lot mr steve we'll see you next week thank you mr duncan and uh, goodbye to everyone out there and uh, have a happy week learning english that's great and we will see you very soon bye 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 that's mr steve he has now left the building he is now in the garden already already he's run out of the door he's run out he's outside now taking his clothes off enjoying the cold weather <laughs> not really that would definitely scare the neighbors it's time to say goodbye bye bye to fs bye bye julie bye bye to tiraboon tian jamelia randall pilar and safiul safula analytic brain <laughs> and also tias tia we are going to finish with something that i showed you earlier it is the sleepy chick a baby green finch having a sleep i will see you next week have a super super week stay safe and of course enjoy english you know what's coming next of course you do Ta-ta for now.